Okay, the time has come. Now, for the last couple of months, I've been saying I'm going to be participating in Ironman Switzerland, but I haven't actually officially entered the event yet. But in the last couple of days, a friend I'm doing this event with texted me saying he just got his spot because he got the email saying they are 80% full and are likely to reach capacity soon. So now I'm gonna bite the bullet, I'm gonna fully commit, buy the ticket, and make this a solid commitment for the calendar in 2024. Okay, so now that my bank account is officially £833 lighter, I am officially signed up for the Ironman Switzerland in Thun, I think is how you pronounce it. It's spelled T-H-U-N, but the course looks amazing. One thing I don't really hear people talking about is how expensive a triathlon actually is, because it's not just the event itself, in which case this event by itself has cost me over 800 pounds to do, but that's excluding the travel, the accommodation, the food over the race days, all of the training preparation going up to that, so all of the equipment, um, all of the additional food for the training, the gym memberships, the pool, the wetsuits, going to the lakes, everything. So I think all in, this is going to be a very expensive uh, challenge or experience for me, but I think it's absolutely going to be worthwhile. And I don't see it as an expense, uh, in my opinion, I see it as an investment because obviously what I'm going to gain from doing this challenge is going to be second to none. Now, another challenge for these next six months, which became very evident for me over these last 24 hours, is going to be trying to navigate the training and the training hours with a one-year-old son in the household. So today I'm supposed to have a two-hour bike ride just to build some capacity and it's five o'clock now. I should have done it this morning, but last night, due to an unwell child, I had about four hours of broken up sleep which means today has not gone to plan, but I was able to fit in a nap this afternoon. I still will be getting a bike ride done, but something I wanna be fully transparent with over these next six months is that challenge of trying to navigate normal life and fit in all of the training hours that an Ironman requires. So I'm gonna have some dinner, carb up, get ready, and you're gonna join me in the gym next for the two hour bike ride on the Watt Bike. All right, fast forward to 7.25. I've probably left this a little bit late, really, on a Sunday. I don't really want to be doing a two-hour ride right now. Um, this is definitely one of those sessions that's going to be building more mental resilience. And to be honest, that's all part of this challenge of doing the Ironman, because one of the characteristics I want to build is the discipline to do something, even when I feel like not doing it. And I feel like if you can reframe your challenges as an opportunity to get better, it makes the challenge slightly less hard in a way. So that's how I'm kind of viewing this session right now. I've got my two gels. I've actually only just really started preparing myself with gels right now. I've still got like five months, but your gut can actually get used to kind of digesting these. Obviously to begin with, um, I've got a fairly sensitive gut anyway. So whenever I start off with gels, um, I do it very sparingly and try and build my way up especially when I'm running because obviously everything's kind of bouncing up and down in the stomach. So on the bike with two gels today, two hours, I'll be having one gel about one hour 15, maybe even a little bit sooner, and the other gel at about one hour 40. So the goal is to have 60 to 70 grams of carbohydrates for every hour after your first hour of endurance exercise. And because I'm only doing two hours, I don't actually need that much. I'll also be using this. So this is Hub or Hube, I've I seen an advert recently and it's pronounced Hube, I believe, uh, but this is their anti-shave sports lubricant. So I'll be using that, obviously, for the two hours on the bike to try and avoid as much chafe as possible, as this is the longest bike ride so far of this pre-preparation preparation phase that I'm doing right now. So I'm gonna get changed, and we are good to go. Let's do this. I can't forget the signature Ignite Performance cap. There we go. Well, that's annoying. Within the space of me getting to the gym and getting changed, someone else is now on the Watt bike, uh, just starting off a Swift session. So luckily I have a membership at another gym with one Watt bike. So I'm gonna drive to that gym now, which is about 15 minutes to see if that Watt bike is free. This is just 
super annoying because I didn't really want to do this session anyway so I'm really being tested right now and it, it's kind of one of those where I've got it in my mind I feel like I have to do it otherwise I'll be very very unhappy um, going to sleep tonight so I'm gonna go to this gym and then worst worst case scenario if that watt bike isn't free then I am going to just use the turbo trainer at home. And the reason I don't like using the turbo trainer at home in the evenings is just because it makes a lot of noise and I feel like I'm disturbing people. Um, and I like having the watt bike for the screen and the data. But we're gonna go to the gym now, see if it's free. Fingers crossed, touch wood. And I may even be reducing the two hours to an hour and a half because it would then be eight o'clock or even just after by the time I actually get on the bike, if it's free. Okay, so we are just over one hour in. Yes, we did manage to get on the Watt bike. 34K just ticked. And I think we're an average of 153 watts. So we're feeling good so far. Just about to have one of these gels. And then in another 20 to 30 minutes, I'll have another gel to push me through for the last half an hour. And we will be going for the two hours because that's what I had set. That's what we're gonna do. Let's get it. there we go I said two hours but I ended up going just over because I got to two hours and I had like 68k on the clock and I'm just too competitive not to round that up to 70 so we got to 70 and clocking off at two hours five minutes very happy with that and a total of 71.2k for the biggest ride of this prep so far well what started off as a fairly hectic night and definitely not the start to the session that I wanted, especially on a day where I only had four hours of broken up sleep. That actually ended up to be a really, really good session. And this is why it's so worth showing up. I had half a mind, at least more than half a mind to just completely pack that session in and just maybe do something else or if not, just go home at all. I was so frustrated, obviously lack of sleep, more frustration, and I just really just didn't want to get that session done. But as I mentioned before, that is why those sessions are so valuable because on the day of the Ironman and any other day where I'm required to show up, I may not be in the mood, but I can't rely on my mood to get me to do what I need to do. I might have a bad night's sleep before the Ironman. That is actually probably going to happen. Um, you know, there's always gonna be times where you show up not feeling at 100%. But now that I have done that session, I have more confidence in my ability to be able to show up in those situations because I was feeling rough, lack of, lack of sleep. I didn't want to get it done, but I did. And I actually had a really good session. So that now is a brick in the wall. It's a session I can put in the bank and call back to when I'm feeling like that again in the future because I'm absolutely going to feel like that again at some point, one way or another. So I'm really happy I got that done. I'm gonna go in, get some food now, as it's now 10.30 in the evening and I've got an early morning start and I look forward to catching up on the next clip. Let's go. Right, good morning. It's currently 6.30 and we're just getting ready to hit a weight session. So I don't really have much of a morning routine but it will generally start with my supplements and a weigh-in just so I can keep track of my body weight and my body composition. But I'll have some electrolytes. I've got the high five zero tabs. I'll get these in bulk off Amazon, nothing special. I'll have ashwagandha, which is supposed to help support mental energy, immunity, and general clarity and focus of the mind. Help to reduce brain fog. And then some pure cod liver oil. And I'll also mix the creatine in with the electrolytes. And I'll generally take five to 10 grams of that each day. I don't weigh it, I just eyeball it with a teaspoon. So we're gonna get this down and get on the way to the gym.
So it's now 6.30 in the evening and I'm having one of my favourite snacks at the moment. So I've got some Scottish honey, which I love, I bought the other day and just put some of that on top of a bagel. And that's pretty much how I'm getting most of my carbs at the moment. Um, obviously I'm getting them from meals as well, but kind of in between meals, or either have like a bagel, or it'd be some granola and Greek yogurt with more honey on top, or I actually have some really nice um, like cherry bakewell protein flapjacks, which are like 500 calories each, 17 grams of protein, and I'll usually have one, if not two of those a day as well. Um, right now I'm not tracking my calories, but if I had to estimate from my experience of previously tracking them, I would say they're about three and a half to 4,000, and I'm pretty sure I'm losing weight right now, and I don't actually want to lose that much weight at the moment. Um, I've still got pr like a lot of time to just, like do it slower, so I wanna slow down the rate of weight I'm losing, um, or the rate of weight loss, and, and just basically just try and hold on to as much muscle as I can. Um, dinner is cooked when we get back from the swim, which is just chicken and tomatoes, 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 chicken and tomatoes and then just have that with some rice or potatoes and then probably a bowl of like Greek yogurt in the evening after dinner with some protein powder and some berries and maybe more granola depending on how I feel especially on the double train days I'm trying to get more carbs in but I'll break down in another video more about my nutrition but for now I'm gonna eat this bagel and get to the pool for a 2 to 2.5k swim <laughs> Worst swim ever. Nah, it wasn't too bad. I managed to get the 2k done eventually, but that session just made me feel like I'd never actually swam before. I couldn't get into the flow. There was loads of people in the pool, so I kept having to like stop and start and get in line with people, which was just really frustrating. And then at like 1500 meters, I just randomly started having a coffin fit for God knows what reason. So we got it done, got it done at a slow pace, by no means a PB or anything I'm super proud of besides just ticking it off. Back now, about to have dinner, which I've opted for wraps instead of the rice potatoes I mentioned before, uh, with just some spinach and avocado. I'm gonna get this down and I'm gonna clock out there. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Stay tuned for episode five next week. And of course, as always, if you have any question based on Ironman training or training for endurance alongside strength, then make sure you comment down below and give us a follow on Instagram in the description down below. Take care.